Mike Glover here, Pro Tips, Black Rifle Coffee Company. Let's kick it off. If you didn't know, I was a Green Beret, it's a big deal. Um, I'm sitting here and I'm using Green Beret tactics on how I set up my kit and staging it. A lot of guys heard of this everyday carry thing. It's like putting your crap into a place or maybe you like that cool pocket dump. It's like, oh, look at that pocket dump. Um, so when I look at everyday carry stuff, I wanna stage it and consolidate it in one location. In special operations, we had kit rooms, staged areas that were typically plywood like if you were a Navy SEAL, you had cool, sexy stuff. If you're a Green Beret, we're poor. So we take like plywood and like push it together and that's our little box. But the overall idea is I have access to all my equipment in one place and I could do PCIs. I could pick it up, do an inspection, a pre-combat inspection of my equipment to make sure it's all good to go. Uh, for example, this is our tourniquet holder with a soft T wide by TACMED Solutions. It's in our tourniquet holder made for everyday carry. Clip, this is sprung steel, similar to Alice clips back in the day with this little shieldy thing in Majigi that protects it against your skin or flesh to allow you to carry this conveniently and comfortably. Um, and so when I have it here, I could do this inspection and then put it on my person building confidence. That's the overarching idea. You never want to just throw crap on you and not have an understanding of what you have on your person, but also have confidence that whatever you have on your person, it's in the same status that you want to save your life. Well, let me give an example. Knife, flashlight, keys, wallet. Uh, Phil Craft Frontier, uh, that's a big deal. You guys can see that on at Phil Craft Frontier on Instagram. But leather, American made goods. So now I have the two life saving pieces of equipment. I have our tourniquet holder, soft T wide for stopping the bleed. I have our holster uh, with a 320. Uh, serrations for an RMR, but also for press checking the gun without pulling it in and out. I have the ability to drop the magazine or source of feed as well. Could load, unload, make safe, all that stuff without put it, pushing it in and out of the holster. Not to say that you guys don't trust yourself, but, but that's just a, a thing. I don't want you in a gas station parking lot pulling the gun out of the center console, press checking it in inside the car and somebody calls the cops on you and gets weird. I, I like the fact that I could do that with the holster still on. So now as it's staged, I wanna check the status of this stuff. Not to say your kids or your spouse or whoever you're living with didn't mess with it, but I'm instilling the confidence and almost doing a free rehearsal. It, let me give you an example. If I was putting on my night vision for an operation overseas, I wouldn't just trust that my night vision has the right batteries and that it's good to go. I would swap batteries so they're fresh, turn them on and do an ops check or an operations check, and then get my day started in the operation. Same thing with a gun. I'm just not just gonna keep it loaded, pull my gun and just trust that it's loaded. I'm gonna do a press check and make sure it definitively is loaded. So now as I have this little setup in this guy, I'm gonna pull this out look at it and inspect it. So I'm not gonna take it apart and just, you might even do that. You might even do a free rehearsal and practice, but I'm gonna go ahead and look at it and go, okay, nobody's messed with it. It's in the same position, rubber band top and bottom, and then I'm gonna stow it away. So as I stow this away, I'm ensuring that it's properly stowed in the right position, turning it around, and then sticking it in ready access. <laughs> I'm not even gonna go there. Um, Evan wants me to, but I'm not. I'm just not, I'm gonna keep it cool, keep it professional. I just ripped my shirt just now. So now it's it's stowed. I, I know it's stowed, it feels comfortable, I'm good to go. Now I'm gonna take the pistol. So here's what I want you to get in the habit of doing. If you use our holsters, we both have the Tenacore and then the magnet retention holster that will be available at Sportsman's Warehouse. If I take this pistol out, um, I'm going to ensure the status of it because I'm assuming that every firearm is loaded, but it's an admin load. A lot of people don't believe in this idea of admin loading. It's a thing. I have all the time in the world to ensure this is properly loaded. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drop the source of feed on this side, drop the magazine. In this case, because of safety, I wanna make sure I don't have bullets in it, but this would be topped off with a little window identifying that, oh yeah, there's brass in there. It's loaded with 21 rounds. Oh, by the way, this is a 320 uh, SIG 
which is uh, the M18 variant, the Army's variant of the compact version of the M17. This is what the Army's going to, essentially a 320. So as I take the bullet, I, uh, or as I take the magazine, I look at it, 21 rounds topped off. I push and pull, ensuring it's properly seated. I turn it over. Now, fancy pants here, SIG has put a little detent, a little teat, we'll call it, where if I do this, I'll fill that, and I know that one's in the chamber. As you can see, it's nice and flat, and the reason that is flat is because there's not one in the chamber. It would be risen if there was one in the chamber, which allows you to build with confidence that I don't have to press check the gun by breaking the breech. If I broke the breech like this, where I look into it, yeah, you could do that, but you're compromising the breech. If you do break the breech because of your pistol, whatever you're using, please let it go manually and push on the rear of the slide to ensure it's properly seated and you have a locked chamber. Now I know it's good to go, it's loaded, and there's no doubt it's loaded. Now I could put it away. As I put it away on my person, I'm setting it into the right position, putting my hand on the position, ensuring it's snug, and now I'm ready to start my day with confidence that I have life-saving equipment. I might even check myself in the mirror and go, man, uh, no FUPA going on right here, so I'm good to go. That's a thing that you should make a habit and routine of your life. Why? Because it matters. Life-saving gear on your person matters. You are your own first response and you're the capability. And if you don't take this serious, this world of everyday carry serious, who's gonna do it for you? So um, where you can get these mats, you could make your own mat. Get creative with a, a piece of wood. Uh, basically, it's a mouse pad. Go get a mouse pad. Get creative. Get a piece of wood, get a piece of uh, cloth. Do something to set this and segment it separate from everything else you do in your world. And, and doing the same when I come home, I'm just putting it in one place and that gives me the confidence that I can go into my day um, the next morning doing the same. One caveat, the insurance here. Look, don't leave your guns out for your kids to get access. Have a plan to secure that. What I would do is I would use a box, a safe or something and still stow my stuff, but you could stow it from your safe and, and do the same thing in a pre-combat inspection and a loadout from your safe, from your safe room, from your locked box, whatever it is. Guys, the, the importance of pro tips is we're continuing to educate you and remind you of all these small practices. It doesn't do us any good if you don't do it. Make sure you do it and you do it well. Um, guys, till next time, this is Pro Tips. Big shout out Black Rifle Coffee. This is my favorite, by the way, this Mocha 200 milligrams. The 300 milligrams, my employees get mad at me because I'm pegging and bouncing off the walls. But make sure you support Black Rifle Coffee and Phil Craft Survival at philcraftsurvival.com. Till next time, stay alert, stay alive.